this morning. I'm so happy that um, you could all make it this morning. Um, today, I want to just start off our service by reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 1 to 3. And it ties in very well with the worship lineup that we've just had. Um, I'm reading from the H H HCSB. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that he has redeemed them from the hand of the foe and has gathered them from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Amen. Um, we are the redeemed of the Lord and we have so much to be thankful for. Um, welcome to church, everyone. Um, today we are just so thankful that we get to meet and we get to be reminded that we have been redeemed, that we have so much to be thankful for, that we are the, the Christ's purchased possession and that all authority and power have been returned that has been stolen, that had been stolen from us from by the fall. So this morning, um, we're about to get into our communion and offering message, and we are going to hear from Mr. Shenji. Mr. Shenji, are you ready for us today? I am ready, Nicole. Morning to you. Morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. All right, you can take thank it away. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, a pleasant morning to you all, uh, fellow believers of Grace and Faith Fellowship. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. It's always an honor to minister in the house of the Lord. And um, I'm hoping what the Lord has in store for both you and me would be of help and assistance to our life, amen. Right, the title of my communion message is, um, I was crucified in Christ. Um, you know, Jesus never wants us to lose focus of, or, or God rather never wants us to lose focus of what happened at the cross of uh, Calvary. Um, in fact, he wants us to literally see ourselves in, in Christ as he, as Christ took that gruesome and vicious punishment on the cross on our behalf. Um, our first reading will come from uh, Galatians. Paul was writing to Jewish believers um, who had slipped back into their old ways of the law. They were believing they could be justified by uh, doing what was said in the law of, uh, of uh, thing, uh, Moses and um, not through faith in what Christ had done for them at the cross of Calvary. Of, uh, Calvary. So this is just a background of, 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 of the verse before we jump into the verse. So we can jump into the verse. Um, is the text, okay, I can read the verse. Uh, the verse is Galatians 3 verse one. It comes in the Amplified. Um, it says, all you poor and silly, and thoughtless and unreflecting and senseless Galatians who uh, fascinated you or bewitched or cast a spell over you, unto whom right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was openly and graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified. Amen. So, saints, um, the question this morning is. Um, what had the Galatians, uh, I mean, why had, uh, I mean, what had the Galatians believers uh, become blinded to? You know, this question we're asking so that we also don't fall into the, into the same trap and, 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 and uh, so that we, we, we can get this answer. I will, I will pick a few extracts from the Old Testament, which graphically give us a picture of what really happened to Christ at the cross of Calvary, and this he did on our behalf. Um, in Isaiah 52, the scripture tells us uh, that his face was so mad that he seemed hardly human. And in the exact words of scripture, I will read from Isaiah 52, 
verse 14 in the New Living Translation, Isaiah 52, verse 14, it says, but many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know he was a man. Uh, Saints, this is very hard to imagine, the things that I've just read that, you know, a man would be abused and battered to the point that he would hardly look human. And this is hard to imagine, as I said. In Isaiah 53 as well, the Holy Spirit tells us that it was this abuse and, and, and beat the beatings, they were so bad that when you took a look at him, you would not take a second look. Uh, it says when you looked once, you would immediately look away and you would not dare take a second look. You know, people these days, they love movies which are full of violence, movies which are full of killing. They love sport where people are beating each other up. You know, sports like a thing, a thing, a thing, a boxing, MMA, karate, where people are busy beating themselves up. People love to see these things, you know, but in this case, saints, this was very different. This was worse. This was unbearable. This you could not possibly look at twice. So that's how bad it was. And uh, in Psalm 22, David describes that um, Jesus Christ was so dehydrated that his tongue was sticking on the roof of his mouth. His body was cut so deep from the beatings endured that uh, you could literally count you know, his bones or his ribs. This he did for our healing. And saints, let us remember also that this was a very cold night and he was stripped to almost naked. He barely had his under uh, garments on. And, and, and just imagine the pain and the agony that he went through in this, in this very cold weather. And this is just but a few of the scripture scenes which uh, I think it described the gruesome, inhumane suffering of Christ, a man who had known no sin, a man who did no sin, you know, and all this he suffered on behalf of you and on behalf of me. And um, what does the Holy Spirit want us to, why does the Holy Spirit want us to uh, literally see this crucifixion of Jesus Christ in a graphic way. Uh, if we can move on to our next slide, if the text team is ready yet, which is Galatians 2 verse 20. Yes. You can read it, my sister. I think Nicole is muted. Okay, thank you, thank Sorry, you. Sorry, I was muted. Okay. <laughs> Should I read it? Yes, yes, sure, you can, you can My read it. My old like self it. has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen, amen. Thank you, my sister Nicole. Saints, if it gets embedded in our hearts that this punishment was for us, and more so we were with Jesus Christ when he suffered that punishment. And in essence, the just penalty for all our wrongdoing uh, was fully met. We become empowered saints to walk in this newness of life that Jesus Christ delivered for us when he was raised um, from the dead back to life with us. And let's go on to our next scripture. Romans chapter six, verse four to six from the TPT. Sharing in his death by our baptism means that we are co-buried with him. So that when the father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with him. 
we have been co-resurrected with him so that we could be empowered to walk in the freshness of new life. For since we were we are permanently grafted into him to experience a death like his, then we are permanently grafted into him to experience a resurrection like his and the new life that it imparts. Could it be any clearer that our former identity is now and forever deprived of its power? For we were crucif co-crucified with him to dismantle and the stronghold of sin within us so that we would not continue to live one moment longer submitted to sin's power. Amen. 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 Thank you, my sister. Since we are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, uh, meaning God sees Christ's purity and his righteousness when he looks at us. And to uh, top it up, this body of sin uh, was co-crucified with Jesus Christ and can no longer call the shots in our, in our lives. So since let's not lose sight of, of the cross of Calvary and the, 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 the gruesome punishment Christ went through. And as we partake this morning, saints, um, I want us to, to rejoice uh, to this good news and be empowered to walk in our righteousness. Um, yes, we may fall from time to time, but uh, this gives us the energy to quickly get up, believing that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. And the old man and his old habits and his sin was done away with. And the perfection of Christ is all that God sees when he looks at us. Amen, saints. Shall we partake whilst I prepare for our giving message? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the title of my giving message is, uh, we need to cash in on our, on our giving. Uh, let's jump straight into our first scripture, Proverbs 19, verse 17. Uh, Proverbs 19, verse 17 in the message. Mercy to the, to the needy is a loan to God, and God pays back those loans in full. Amen. Amen, saints. Uh, the interesting thing about this uh, promise uh, and the promise that we're also going to read in the following passage is that this promise was not made to Israel. It was not also made to the church, but it was made to everyone who just decides to participate in a life of uh, giving to the poor and helping the poor. The word says the returns are guaranteed. Amen. Can we move on to our next verse? Psalms chapter 41, verse one to three. Oh, the joys of those who are kind to the poor. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. The Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. Amen, amen. If we count the promises um, made in, this, in, this, uh, in these verses to someone who helps the poor, we will see there are seven promises. We will not go through them one by one. And um, when we also look at the entirety of this uh, psalm, um, which was written by David, who apparently is a character that uh, fascinates me in the Bible. When he wrote this psalm, he was on a sick bed. I'm sure when you read the uh, thing, he, the, the full psalm, everything would come out in the open. He was on a sick bed and his enemies were also after him. And he did not want to die. So he was in fact cashing in on the uh, thing he giving that he had done to the to the to the poor so let's see uh, uh, what what uh, happens in the next scripture but this is a lesson that i believe we should also learn as uh, 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 that we can also cash in on our giving and god will always honor his word and not because of our good deeds 
but because of, of his mercy and his grace, as we will read in this Psalm of David. Amen. We can go on to the next scriptures. Psalms 41, verse 4. Uh, oh Lord, I prayed, have mercy on me. Heal me for I have sinned against you. I know you are pleased with me for you have not let my enemies triumph over me. You have preserved my life because I am innocent. You have brought me into your presence forever. Amen. 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 These have taken extracts of uh, Psalm 41 verse 4 and also extracts from Psalm 41 verse 11 to 12. And this is very interesting because in verse 4, David acknowledged that he had sinned. But if we read further down, in the last verse, he professes his innocence. You know, this can be a bit confusing, but if we understand the mercy of God and the grace of God, it won't be confusing, especially for us new believers who have been made the righteousness of God in, in Christ Jesus. And I pray that the Lord uh, opens our eyes to this. This was a man who understood the mercy of God. And by so doing, he was able to find the grace of God and cash in on it. David was delivered for he says his life was preserved. You and I can also find and receive and cash in on all of God's promises. If we understand his mercy and are persuaded that Mm. I think we've lost uh, Mr. Shenji there. Um, tech team, if you would please just take us to the to the screen where you can be where we can see how we can give. I, am I back now? Oh, he's back. He's back. Am I am I back now? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I think my network. Yes. Uh, was uh, anyway i had just been saying that um you know if we understand the mercy of god and are persuaded that it's not about the things we do or the things that we don't do or the sin that we've done but it's basically about having faith in what christ jesus has done for us if we only do that we will be able to receive and cash in also on all the promises of god including receiving back on whatever we have we have given to God because the word is very clear that God you know uh, uh, will always reward our our labor of love so uh, this was an old covenant man and 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 who knew uh, receiving mercy and accessing the grace of God um, only depended on having faith in the goodness of God
Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shenje, for that powerful message um, that was delivered so, so well. Thank you for reminding us that um, how important it is to remember the death of Jesus Christ and that it's important for us to not lose sight of what we have received and what Christ had to suffer in order for us to receive it. It's very powerful. Um, especially since we are reminded that every time we take communion, we are doing it to proclaim the Lord's death. And so just that vivid picture of what Jesus had to go through in order for us to be set free is just such, was, was so powerful for me. And I, I really thank you for sharing that. Um, Saints, now we are about to get into our main message. Today, we are going to be hearing from Auntie Nancy. I call her Auntie Nancy. Um, <laughs> affectionately, Auntie Nancy. How are you, Auntie Nancy? Hi, Nicole. How are you? Good to see I'm you. Fine, thanks. <laughs> it's good to see you. I've been seeing your pictures from from Mexico, and you look so <laughs> so good. You look like you're really enjoying yourself. How are you there? I'm good. I'm good, and I really did enjoy. God is such a good father and is good at spoiling his kids so i had an awesome time and it's good to be back we're good we're, we're happy to have you back um you can take it away amen amen good morning saints um this morning i would like to share a short message of encouragement uh that the lord has been encouraging me with and um the Lord is such a good teacher. <laughs> He's such a good teacher. And I think all the good teachers got that gift from God. He's just been encouraging me with this message that I'm sharing today. Because for a long time, um, I had been seeking and uh, searching on how to be fruitful in the, in the Christian life. And uh, you try all sorts of things. You try, you know, I, I, I would try a lot of works in order to be successful but i didn't know it's in it's in resting in him it's it's just it's in uh being rooted in christ that you become fruitful so you know being a good teacher that he is he just simplified things for me and took me from the old testament the gospels to the new testament and showed me how simple he has put it in the scripture that we should just rest in him and that's how we should be fruitful, we would be fruitful. And you know, as, as the Lord was taking me through the scriptures, he was using a tree as an illustration of how I should just rest in Christ so that I can be fruitful. And I was reminded of our grade one teachers. I remember when we started meds in grade one, <laughs> I remember when our teacher taught us uh, using, um, you know, white chalk on the board. I really didn't get what she, what she was trying to teach us. But when you say it, go home and bring uh, seeds, maize seeds, or 10 stones, 10 maize seeds, or whatever seed you can find, 10 of them. We did that. We brought those seeds back the next day. And she started teaching us using those seeds. And she, say, she should say, put one seed on, on one side and two on the other side. Now bring them all together. Count them. How, 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 how many are they? And from that time, myths became so much easy because I had those illustrations, I had those seeds. And for me, that's how I feel God is such a good teacher. He, he just took me from the Old Testament to the New Testament to show me how important it is to, to, to rest in him, to be rooted in him. That's where fruitfulness comes from. So uh, I'll, I'll just take you on a short trip from the Old Testament to the New Testament and also share with you what the Lord has been sharing with me. So uh, first of all, we'll read uh, quite a number of scriptures after reading, then I'll share with you the lessons that he's been sharing with, with me. So Nicole, you can read the first scripture. Okay, Psalms chapter one, verse two to three from the NLT. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves do not wither, uh, and they prosper in all they do. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nicole. So from that scripture, 
the Lord is talking about those who delight in the law of the Lord or in the word of God, who meditate on it day and night. For me, this shows that you are doing it all the time. You are meditating on his word. You are, you are stayed on his word. He's saying those people are like trees planted along the river bank. So for me, he started showing me how he has used trees to show how, how, how we should be, how, how it is like for a person who is successful in the kingdom of God. So he's saying those who stay in the word. Those who meditate on the word of God day and night are like trees planted by the riverbank. They always have constant supply of water. And because of that, they will be a fruit, be it in, uh, in dry seasons, be it in drought, be it in all the seasons, they will be a fruit because their roots are in water. So, so are you, if, if you meditate on the, on the word of God day and night, you are just like a tree planted by the riverside. I'll talk more about it in the next slide. Let's go to the next scripture. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 78 from the NLT. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Amen. 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 There we have it again, saints. We had in the Psalms, uh, uh, the Lord likening those who love the word or who meditate on the word to trees. And there we have it again. Jeremiah is likening those who trust in the Lord to trees that are planted by the river back. It's almost the same scripture. So here, here, the Lord is also showing us that if we trust in the Lord and we make him our hope and confidence, if we make him our, our, our hope and confidence, we'll be like trees planted like on, the, on a river bank. So this scripture is showing us that anyone who trusts in the Lord is the same as a person who meditates on the word of God day and night. So we are seeing trees in Psalms, in Jeremiah. Let's move on to the, same, to the next scripture. John chapter 15, verse five from the NLT. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. There again in the Gospels, now we are in the Gospels, the Lord uses uh, an imagery of a tree. He says, he is the vine and we are the branches. Apart from me, we can do nothing, but connected to him who produce much fruit. So for me, I thought to myself, the Lord has used trees, trees to say one message. And uh, from the scripture that I, that I have used, you can see that he's saying one message, fruitfulness comes from being like a tree, comes from being stayed in one place like a tree. We'll talk more about it in the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Ephesians chapter three, verse 17 from the NLT. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Amen. Um, from the amp Okay. You can go ahead, sorry. Uh, from the Amplified Version, it reads, so, the Lord, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love. Amen. The, we see again an imagery of a tree. We see the, uh, uh, Paul talking about re referring uh, to us as roots. Mm -hmm. When we create, make Christ when we when we make when we give Christ room in our hearts and trust in Him, He's saying your roots will grow down into God's love. He's likening us to to a tree again. We see an imagery of a tree again in this scripture. So you know from the Old Testament, the Gospels, the New Testament, the Lord keeps on using using this imagery 
of a tree. And for me, I started thinking the Lord is really wanting me to just simply look at a tree. And the Lord is so good. I know many people have trees wherever they live. Uh, yeah, it might not be everyone, but I think almost every one of us listening, you've seen a tree in your life and maybe every day you see a tree in your life. That's how the Lord wants us to, to remember what he wants us, how, how we are going to be fruitful in this Christian world. Let's have the next scripture. Okay, Psalms we, 9. Sorry, Nicole. Okay. We'll come back to Psalm 91 after we, we are done with the slides. It's quite a, quite a long, um, long, long chapter. So I'll ask the tech team to bring us back after we are done with the next uh, slide. So I'm going to get into the lessons that the Lord has been teaching me, the simple lessons uh, that he's been teaching me from, from the trees. They're simple, yet they are so deep, yet they are the one. The lesson that he's been teaching me is what will produce fruit in my life and in your life. So the first thing he started teaching me is that a tree is constant. That's very simple. We all know that even a grade one student who knows that very well, that a tree is constant. It never moves from where it is planted. It stays where it is. There are some trees that we're seeing today that I think our great, great grandparents saw, and they are still there. They haven't moved. And I really felt that the Lord was talking to me about being constant mm -hmm. in his word, being constant in relationship uh, with him and not moving, just like a tree is. It's been there, it never moves. Just being rooted in one place in the word of God, being rooted in relationship with him and never moving. The other thing that the Lord started to show me is that come rain, storm or sunshine, it remains planted in all seasons. I've never seen a tree that says, oh, it's winter time, uh, especially in those areas that have snow. I've never seen a tree that says, it's going to snow. I'm going to lose all my leaves. It's going to be bad. I need to move. The tree stays there in winter times, in stormy weather, in sunshine, in rain. It stays planted. It does not uproot itself. Uh, in all seasons. So the Lord started talking to me that in all seasons, in all seasons, in good times, in bad times, I should stay rooted in the word. I should never leave that important place. Just like staying rooted is important for a tree. I should stay in the word of God. I should stay in relationship uh, with him. Be it in good times, be it in bad times, be it when things are just, you know, normal. I should just stay in the word. I would even dare to say, especially in good times, because when things are all good, uh, human beings have a tendency to just wander away from God and even from his word. We, we, we get excited with what's going on in our lives that we forget to stay, that we forget that whatever is going on in our life has come from being rooted. So I'm just saying, just like a tree, the Lord started saying to me, stay rooted, stay there. Shakanaka, Rashata. Really normal, stay where you are planted. That is in the word of God and in relationship with, with him. The next thing was um, a tree's fruitfulness comes from being constantly rooted. Um, and I, I, these are simple things that we all know. For you to, to eat a mango tree, a uh, mango fruit, that tree has to stay the way it's planted and grow. Uh, it might be for, for some years, uh, which is sometimes uh, uh, to impatient people, it's irritating that for, for you have planted a tree and for some a number of years, you're not getting anything from it. But it has to stay there so that it can be fruitful. Eventually, as it stays there, it starts to produce fruit and we can enjoy the fruit of that mango tree. So it, it, it is with us. God wants us to to, to, to stay in the word, to stay in relationship with him. Sometimes it might seem like, hey, I've been just, I've just been a Christian for a long time. I've been, you know, in the word for a long time in relationship with God uh, for a long time, but I'm not seeing manifestations of this, uh, uh, of, the, of the word or relationship with him. Just stay there, it's coming. Just like you planted a tree sometimes and you keep on shaking and nothing is coming. Eventually, that tree is going to, to, to give fruit. So it is the same with you. 
just yours is to stay planted. Yours is to stay rooted. Yours is to, is to stay in the word. The fruit will eventually come. So I've just put uh, points there in red, just to say God wants, just to say that God wants us to dwell in relationship with Him and His word and not visit. Just like a tree does not visit, it stays there. <laughs> it does not visit where it, it's planted. It stays there. It's constantly there. God does not want us to revisit relationship with him or to visit the word. He wants us to stay there. That's why he said, Munasam, that day and night we need to meditate on the word of God. The other point that, uh, that I, I put there is no matter the season, stay rooted. Come good times, bad times, remain rooted, especially in good times, I would dare to say, because that's where the temptation is to, to wander away from God. And then the last point from that, uh, from lesson one is that fruitfulness in a believer's life comes from being deeply rooted in relationship with God and his word. Saints, that, that is my testimony. I, <laughs> when I became a Christian, I wanted to see fruit in my life. And I was wondering why there is no fruit in my life. And I wondered if <laughs> I was a tree that used to visit, therefore there was no fruit in my life. I wondered everywhere, went for, for deliverance, went, tried different things in order to be fruitful. But I thank God that God loved me so much that he started giving me this word that I need to stay rooted in the word, in relationship with him. That's where fruitfulness comes from. So I hope uh, you're being encouraged to stay in the word. I'm just speaking to someone to say, stop uh, wondering about and stay in the word of God. Meditate on his promises for you. Stay in that relationship with him. You might not be seeing fruit right now, but I assure you his word does not return for it. It accomplishes its purpose. Fruit is surely coming your way. Amen. Let's move on to lesson two. Amen. The other lesson that I learned from, from a tree as I was just thinking about a tree as the Lord was just pointing me to a tree is that everything thrives in the medium it was created from. For example, if you take a look at a fish, it thrives in water. You take a fish out of water, it will die within a few minutes or within an hour, it will die because it, it, it finds its life in water. Um, a, a, a tree is a, is a good example as we are talking about a tree today. If you uproot a tree from the soil, it will die. If you move a tree, if a tree visits, <laughs> it will die. The only way a tree will live is to stay rooted to stay grounded where it has been planted. So it is with us, we are born of God. We find our life in God. We will only thrive in him. Apart from him, there is no life. When we are constantly connected to him through an intimate relationship, we will find life and we will be fruitful. That's why even in John 15, he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Just like a, a fish, apart from water, it is dying. So today I just want to med you to meditate on that, that apart from God, you have started dying. Separate yourself from God, you have started dying. Just like a, a branch, when it falls off, it might fall off very green from the main branch, for the first day, maybe it might be green, but I assure you, just check that branch in the next two, three days. It will dry up. The next thing we are throwing it in the uh, on the rubbish heap and burn it because it's become rubbish. So it is with us <laughs> disconnected from God. Our life becomes nothing, but connected to him, we will thrive. We will be full of life in every season, in good times, in bad times. People will find you and wonder, why are you so full of life? Why are you so full of peace? Why are you so full of joy with everything that is happening around you? Why are you always fruitful despite what is happening around? Why are you enjoying life in Zimbabwe with the economy in Zimbabwe? <laughs> because you're not planted and rooted in, in Zimbabwe. You are planted and rooted in relationship with God and in his word. People will start to wonder. You become a, a, a sign and a wonder. They know things are bad. They know there is a drought, but you are so green. You're so full of life. You're so full of fruit. This is what God wants a Christian to be. It's not about what is going on in our country, what is going on in your life. It's about 
where you are planted. Do not disconnect yourself. Just like a fish, when it gets out of water, you will die, you will, you will cease to be fruitful. So for me, it became such an encouragement to be just like a simple tree. <laughs> Do not uproot yourself. Do not visit, stay there, hey, amen. The next uh, lesson I think is lesson three. Let's go to lesson three, the third lesson that I learned <laughs> from that. So as I was just meditating on this and thinking about it as the, as the Lord was taking me through, through, through this, I started thinking that, you know, the bigger and taller the tree grows, and is it like, you know, for example, uh, you, 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 you see those trees with big mangoes that grow. So there's some mango trees that grow so big and you so tall and, and they have a huge canopy and they have huge mangoes. So I started meditating and thinking on that. That's the bigger and taller the tree grows, the more the roots need to grow deep. Otherwise the tree will topple over and fall. The root is like an anchor for the tree. So for me, I started thinking even, you know, <laughs> This relationship uh, that we are talking about with God and uh, with the word of God is not just for uh, Christians that are uh, newly born Christians. It's for even the mature Christians that are growing in, in maturity in this Christian walk. It's for everyone. There's never a time that you get to say, huh? you know, I've walked with the Lord. I've read the Bible 10 times, even 20 times. Uh, I've had enough of this. I think I've stayed there enough. It's time to move. There's never a time uh, th that, that we should get to say, uh, I, I think uh, I've meditated on that enough or I've stayed where I've been planted enough. We should always stay there. In fact, the bigger the tree uh, grows and the taller the tree grows, in order to find out I'm very rooted in the word of God. The tree should not get prideful and think, ah, now I'm strong enough. I think I can move from here. It will topple over and die. What am I saying? The more we grow in leadership in the kingdom of God, the more we mature, the more we grow uh, uh, in, in relationship with God, the more we need our, our roots deep in relationship with God. I'm also talking to leaders uh, in the body of Christ. The more you grow in that place of leadership, the more your roots need to to. To, to grow deep in relationship with God so that whatever you are giving away, you're not just giving away, you keep on drawing from God and giving away. I've seen people making that mistake that when they grow in the body of Christ in relationship with him, they start detaching themselves from God and start giving and giving until they are running on empty. So just like a tree grows bigger and taller and there's a huge canopy and there's uh, so many mangoes hanging on it. I just started thinking, that tree, you know, when a tree becomes uh, fruitful, when a tree starts producing fruit, it becomes heavy. Just imagine a tree without mangoes. I, I, you know, I started imagining that that tree is lighter than a tree full of mangoes. That tree sh should be heavy because just imagine one big mango, one of those big mangoes. And when it, a mango tree is fruitful, it has, I don't know how many of those, a lot of those. It means, its weight has increased. Therefore, its roots need to dig deep into the ground so that it doesn't fall over. So I'm saying even as you get more fruitful in the kingdom of God, in your Christian hope, you need to stay, your roots need to stay deep in relationship with God. Otherwise, if you do not do that, just like a tree finds itself with so much weight because of fruitfulness, it will topple over. As you give away, as people come and get from you and eat of the fruit of the weight of relationship uh, with God from you, you need to constantly stay there in relationship so that you can have more to give, produce more fruit, more to give. So for me, I just started thinking there's never a time that we can say, ah, you know, I'm fruitful and I'm big enough, I'm old enough, let me walk away from this relationship. Actually, the more you grow in leadership, the more fruitful you, you become, the more your roots should grow deep in relationship with God so that as you become fruitful and people come take from you, as you give away, you are you continue to just draw from him and give away. You're you are always so full. You're sharing from, from the overflow. You are not just giving of, uh, of uh, in Shona, we call it chimunya. 
you are always giving out fresh, fresh things that the Lord is delivering from you. So for me, God was just speaking to me, but even as we grow in, 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 in the kingdom, stay there. There is never a time. I said in all seasons, stay rooted in the word of God. I think I have one last, one last lesson in the next slide. Amen. You know, I, I also started thinking that, you know, the Lord has been purposeful about just using a tree uh, to show us uh, how to be fruitful in the kingdom. Even when it comes uh, to us Christians manifesting his character, he refers to that as the fruit of the spirit. He refers to, to, to his character in us as we manifest it. He says, it's the fruit of the spirit. Again, fruit comes from when a tree is deeply rooted. So for, for us to, to, to produce the fruit of the spirit, for us to, to manifest the fruit of the spirit, we need to stay rooted in the word. So if you see yourself uh, lacking self-control, when you have the fruit of the spirit, all, uh, all born again believers have this fruit inside of them, the fruit of the spirit, but it will manifest as we stay constantly in relationship with God. It will manifest outside as we stay rooted in relationship with God. So if you find yourself being impatient, for example, or lacking self-control, it's just showing you that you are a tree that has moved. Go back to relationship with God because as you are in just constant relationship with, with him, you start to manifest that fruit, joy, peace, love. So all those fruits. So when you see yourself lacking peace, lacking any one of those, feeling, even feeling unloved, it, sh it shows you have moved from the word of God. You have moved from relationship with God. Just go back and stay rooted. Uh, I, I bless God that for us, we are unlike trees, maybe. We can course correct. We can course correct. We can come back to the word. If you find you have moved or uprooted yourself, you can quickly go back to the word and let your roots grow deep in, in him and start, people will start seeing fruit come from you. They'll start seeing the fruit of the spirit come from you. They'll come and taste and see that the Lord is good through you. You know, So it's not every Christian, although every Christian has the fruit of the spirit inside of them, it's not everyone that is manifesting it because some Christians are not grounded. They are not rooted in the word and in relationship with God. So the second point I put there is that the only way the world and those around us will taste and see that the Lord is good is by us staying deeply rooted and connected to God through his word. God wants us to manifest his fruit. God wants people to taste God through us. But the only way, just like a tree, the only way we produce fruit is by staying. So since I'm just still saying the same message, stay connected. The last point on lesson four is let's, let's dwell. Let's stay connected or rooted in relationship with God, no matter what season we find our, say, ourselves in. Let's just be radical about that. Let's stay there. That is our place of prosperity. I've just used scriptures that are talking about trees, but there are so many scriptures uh, that talk about us being constantly connected to God through his word and in relationship with him. For example, I think it's Isaiah 23, 26 verse 3, which says uh, he will keep them in perfect peace, those whose mind is stayed upon him. When your mind is stayed in one place, just like a tree, stayed upon him, the word says he will keep you in perfect peace. You will find yourself in perfect peace peace you find yourself no matter what things are going you know upside down around you but you'll be in perfect peace no matter what season i think the other scripture that uh, that is in the old testament is joshua 1 verse 8 uh the lord talking to joshua when he was leading the children of israel he said he he was giving Joshua tips for success and prosperity. And it's that same tip that the Lord has been showing us through the tree. He said, meditate on the word of God day and night. Stay in the word of God, Joshua. Stay there, meditate, just stay there, stay connected, stay rooted. 
And he says to Joshua, and then you shall have good success when you do that. So the Lord, through many scriptures, I've just used a few, has encouraged us to stay in one place for us to be fruitful, for us to be successful. So for some of us who will have to make choices because I know life can be busy and the enemy knows that this is your place of prosperity. Staying connected, staying rooted is your place of, uh, of prosperity. So he will try by all means to move you, to make you visit, to make you approach yourself. You will try by all means even to make you busy to give you money so that you concentrate on your business so much. He's not the giver of money, of course. He's not the giver of good things, but he, he will make things happen so that you focus on maybe your business or other things as long as you are not in that place of, uh, of, of relationship and uh, relationship with the word and God. He knows you, you will not be successful. So we need to be purposeful about staying in his word, staying connected, staying rooted, just like a tree. So the next time you see a tree, let it just remind you about just being faithful to stay rooted and grounded in the word of God. We can go back to Psalm uh, 91. Amen. Um, I, I won't let uh, Nicole read because I just want to go through some of the scriptures in Psalm 91. So, uh, so some of the verses in Psalm 91. If you read Psalm 91, verse 1, for example, that's on your screen. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Um, Pani vision, you know, see, those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High. Those who live there, those who dwell there, those who do not visit the shelter of the Most High, those who do not visit relationship with God, those who are rooted in relationship with Him. Psalm 91 makes so many promises to those Christians, to those people. And I like that it gives uh, so many promises, promises on protection. Hence, the Lord becomes your refuge. A refuge is a place of protection. It's a place of rest. It's a place of peace. It's a place of, you are just assured of God's love and protection. So he's saying, Psalm 91, David is saying, if we stay with it just like a tree, we will find protection. We are safer there in that place. We will find peace. We will find rest as we just become like a tree constantly connected to him. And uh, he also, you know, as you read, if you go through that scripture, uh, he talks about that you will not have fear. You will not have fear as you stay, as you dwell there. In verse six says, do not, do not, okay, I'll start from verse five. He says, do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. There won't be fear in your life because you are dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. You are underneath his wings. There is no fear in that place. So if you find ourselves fearful, fearful of tomorrow, fear, all form of fear, it just means we have moved. We just need to go back to dwell. Uh, underneath the shadow of the almighty. We just need to be like a tree. So if you find certain things in your life, they're just showing, for me, I love that the Lord is, is, has given us this to show us that you have moved. You need to go back tree and be planted, go back to that one place. And I think it's that in the human nature when things are not the way we want them to be. We want to find other, other soils to be planted in but let's be planted in the word of God. Let's be planted in relationship with him. And in, in, in this, um, in the last verse of, of Psalm 91, there's so much more you can glean from Psalm 91. Uh, even death, he, he, Psalm 91 talks about, you will see thousands dying around you, but it will not come near you. You will not have even fear of death. I think if you, if you at one point, some of you were like me, I used to be so afraid of death. But if you are planted and rooted, you will not be afraid of death. Come COVID, no COVID. Come monkeypox, come whatever the world may bring. You will not be afraid of death. You will just see it 
because you are planted and you're, and you're dwelling in relationship with God. And uh, is in that place also, I, I had forgotten to share on, on verse 13, which says, you will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. As you dwell, that is your place of authority. That is your place of power. Huh? Just staying there in the way, just staying rooted. It is your place of authority. It is your place of power. And David is saying, you will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Since I love the Lord that, you know, we'll get to do things, these things just by simply resting in God, simply resting in his word. We, that's where we find authority and power. So there is power in just being planted, in surrendering to God's word and relationship with him. That's where your power comes from. Shinochkisa, fierce cobras, fierce lions. You will not be afraid of those. You will deal with them. You will know your authority. So no matter what, right, even death, when death comes, you will not be afraid. You will command whoever is dead around you to rise up and come back to life because you are so one with God as you are deeply rooted in him. And then the last scripture, verse 16 says, um, let, let me uh, back up to 15. It says, when they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. There is, God is with us in that place of dwelling. Even when troubles come, we are in this world. Things will happen to us. But the Lord is promising us that those who will live or dwell in the shelter of the Most High, when we find ourselves in trouble and we call to him, he will answer you will be with us in trouble and you will rescue you and honor you. There is power in being rooted saints. There is power in staying in the word. So the last one, the last verse is verse 16. It says, I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Do you want to live long? Do you want to live a long life, but not just a long life, a long and quality life? It's in dwelling. It's in staying rooted in his word. It's in staying in relationship with him. He's saying, I will reward them with a long life and not just a long life, a quality life, a long and quality life. Because he goes on to say, I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. You will have the whole package of salvation. The whole source of package of salvation will manifest in your life. So you will have a long and quality life as you stay rooted like a tree planted by the riverside, you will always be a fruit in always, all seasons. You will be green in all seasons. Even in your old age, you'll be full of life, uh, full of wisdom. People will wonder, is that an, they will look at me if I stay, stay in the wedding and say, is this grandma 99 years for sure? She looks good. And the wisdom that comes from it, they will be amazed because I am constantly rooted in the word of God, in, the, in, in my source of life. So for me, saints, this has been just my short, short encouragement to you to, 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 to dwell just like it. Just, that's how the Lord has simplified it for me, to make the word of God priority, to stay there no matter what, through the busyness of life, through the bad times, through the good times, make it a priority to meditate on the word of God, to stay in relationship with him, to stay grounded and rooted in relationship with him. For me, I find that the Lord has simplified it because I used to think fruit comes uh, from, you know, complicated things. I thought things had to be complicated <laughs> for me to be a fruit, but the Lord has just simplified it, just like a tree. Stay connected, stay rooted, stay in one place in relationship with him and his will. Amen, saints. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Auntie Nancy, for that very important reminder to stay rooted. Um, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned is that <laughs> trees don't move. <laughs>
Um, no. I know it's 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 very um it's it seems very obvious, but I myself have been meditating on um those scriptures, Psalms chapter one, Jeremiah chapter seventeen, and Joshua chapter one verse eight. And it never actually occurred to me that trees don't move. So um <laughs> So, yeah, so it, it's a very important addition that I've added on to my meditation that um, when God is talking about dwelling, he's really talking about you making a choice to to stay in that place where you're just in, in, in fellowship with him, to stay in that place where you don't let the distractions of the world um, take root in your heart that you lose focus and you lose sight of God and what he's what he's teaching you what he's saying to you um that yeah like he's that he's been teaching me that um dwelling really means making a choice to stay focused on God to right. just like to not be a tree that gets constantly uprooted and then planted back again and then constantly being uprooted so like if you're a person who has their attention divided by so many things, you're like a tree that is hoping to produce fruit, but most of the time you, you are not even planted in the ground. You're not planted. You're not connected to the source of living water. You're not connected to the source of life, but you're, you're hoping for some sort of fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the biggest lesson that I've learned is just to stay stay where stay in that place where i'm receiving from god really mm -hmm. to learn to shut everything else out and just stay rooted so thank you very much for that reminder Amen. um saints now we are moving into our discussion session where anyone is open to share what they have learned anything that they have like an aha moment like i've had that trees don't move Anyone who wants to contribute and just share what they have learned, what they've taken from this lesson, any questions that people might have, um, the floor is open. You can raise your hand and we will see you. Um, yes, Kelly, you can go first. Amen. Thank you, Nicole. And um, thank you, my Zulu, for that powerful message. Um, I was just laughing and I said that's some um, Shekinah glory from Mexico that just <laughs> came through. <laughs> but that was just so powerful. And just the concept of remaining. And for me, I think it's the when you're not bearing fruit, um, when it's the hardest to remain and I was just thinking of a tree uh, there's this tree at my workplace and it has seasons like like this season it didn't bear fruit but last season it had lots of fruit you know and it's it didn't move from there so you know just having that I was just thinking that wow that's such a powerful example to say that even when we are not bearing fruit even when a tree is not bearing fruit it still remains and that's what that's the work that God is calling us to so thank you for that reminder my Zulu and yeah Amen. I really enjoyed today's message. Amen. um fina yes i can see your hand is up you can go ahead thank you very much nicole and welcome back to my zulu and thank you very very much for that uh, uh that reminder and encouragement word just to practically uh share with us what this fruitfulness is i think most people are as christians i think it's it's, it's a struggle for many christians many of us because it's almost like I know God, then what? It's not showing. Everyone is like, there's this pressure even with, with non-believers. You know, there's always that. And it's always a discouragement because people are now also relating to God from a place of frustration because they're so like, it needs to show that I'm a child of God. But I think, thank you very much for just bringing that <laughs> It will not come from going to church every Sunday. It will not come from being born again. Those things are important. But fruit mm -hmm. is, 
it's a result of a relationship it's not a Amen. it doesn't come from doing anything but just Amen. being resting Amen. and being established in him and just being enough in him because out of that relationship the same way i was thinking of a man and woman when they we, they always talk about if you're married, if you come together and if a man and a woman know each other, like we know, there's a fruit mm. that comes from that, which is a child. And Amen. we know that they've been in relationship for us to know, okay, the woman is now pregnant. We know there's been, there's been mm. a knowing and there's been a relationship that has happened. Mm. There. So I think mm. for us to ever give, to us to ever to be pregnant and to give birth to anything, there's a knowing that we are being called mm. to a deeper knowing between us and the Lord. And we can, with that knowing, there's no, like, there's no, as you don't, you would not even try. You will be pregnant mm-hmm. with them. And definitely, <laughs> you're going to give birth to something that the world will not ask. Are you a Christian? They will know because you'll be bearing fruits. And so thank you very much for, it seems very obvious to us because we're Christians, but I think it's a very good reminder to realize that we are not being asked to do anything, but we're just called to a relationship. And out of the out of the, all these things that we, we want, seek first mm-hmm. the kingdom of God, which is actually seek his heart, seek, seek his perspective, seek his word. Out of mm-hmm. that, all these things that we are all wanting and declaring and desiring, out of mm-hmm. that relationship, that's the fruit that God talks about. And it becomes a very beautiful a journey and relationship with them. So thank you very much, my soul. I was really blessed and I really blessed. And I mean, can't wait to meditate on the scriptures you gave us. So thank you very much. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you, Fina. I'll just read a few messages in our chat box. Um, iPhone 3 says, uh, amen, amen. So simplified and relatable. Staying, trees not moving. Thanks, Nancy. And from the Mago family, great and enlightening message, my Zulu. Thank you and be blessed. Amen. Um, any more contributions? Anyone else wants to share something? Maybe, maybe um, to end on Spotify well, now. I, well, sorry. Sorry, Nicole. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to add on to what Fina No, you can saying. go ahead. All right. Uh, you know, she was saying we are, we are human beings and and, and not being and not human doings you know from that alone you know the way god cre- the way god created us uh he created us to be with him not to do things with him and just the word being is just a constant just to be there in relationship with him he, you know he created us a new in christ jesus for relationship with him to be with him, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, the church has, uh, I, you know, the, the the doctrine of 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 works has come in, and people think we're created to to be human doings, to do things for him, and I think that is a scheme of the enemy because as we do things for him, as we become human doings, we are busy being away from him. We are we are being uprooted by good things because mm-hmm. I mean serving in church, doing all those good works, they are good. There's a place for them, but sometimes the enemy has come up with a scheme to remove us from relationship with God, from a place of being, of just resting, of being intimate and connected with him, where our fruitfulness comes in. So just I just wanted to, to, to emphasize that we are human beings, not human doings, created and you to be with him to be with him, to spend time with him. As we do that, all those good works will start to come from that from that relationship. And as, as Fina and Kelly were sharing also, God was just reminding me of that scripture I shared when I first started that, you know, his, he, his word does not return for it. It goes out to accomplish its purpose. So you are assured of good. You are assured of success is you stay rooted in his word because it does not return for it. Fruit will come. I know there are some trees you can plant a mango tree and it will never be a fruit because it's a mango tree. But with this seed that we're talking about, the seed of the word of God, is you stay meditating on that word, it will produce fruit, it will not fail. So for me, I just felt I should emphasize that you will not be disappointed, saints. It might take long. In my own life, there are things 
right now <laughs> there are things that i had given up on there are things that i thought you know it's not happening i'm not seeing it but i'm starting to see the fruit of just being in relationship with god and these things are starting to happen when i least expected it so all i did was to just stay in relationship with god and even as i go further i need to stay in that relationship and i think like i emphasized before there's never a time that you can say huh i've worked with the lord nine years nine years of intimacy of being rooted let me now walk away i was just thinking of joshua in joshua 1 8 look at joshua there he was moses is gone he's instantly promoted to start leading the children of Israel. And I'm sure Joshua started thinking, what should I do now? You know, you start, when, when you are in that place, I've, I'm, I'm, I've, this year I found myself uh, in that place. This, this year, beginning of this year, I was promoted from being a dean of students to a director of Clarice Bible College. You know, I started finding myself fretting and anxious thinking, so God, how do I do this? So how am I going to do this big, big job? <laughs> For me, it was so big. And I was thinking, I need to do something different. I was thinking, I need to uproot myself from these soils and get into some sort of soil. And he said to me, stay there. Staying there is what brought you here. And staying there will keep you here and take you further. So in every season of my life, he keeps on saying, stay. And sometimes I'm so tempted to look for new things <laughs> because you are, you're seeing a new season in your life. You start thinking, therefore, I have to change this. In every season, we stay there. When it seems like there is nothing happening, you stay there. When it seems like things are happening, you stay there. When things seems like they are overwhelming things, you stay there. So I just wanted to emphasize the staying that there is never a scenario that will come and God say, God will say, ah, with this one, you need to, uh, maybe you need to stop meditating on the way they maybe move from, there is never a scenario that will come. No matter how small, no matter how big, ours is to stay grounded and rooted and to be with him. That's just how he simplified it. I know as human beings, we think you need to do something new. You need to do just I'll give you, for example, David. David did the same thing. Even when he ki killed Goliath, he did the same things that he was doing as he was taking care of his sheep. As he was taking care of his sheep, David was faithful. He was faithful with the few sheep that the, the father had entrusted him with. He stayed faithful. He looked after those sheep. He killed. Imagine, it, it became such a revelation to me that um, David killed a bear and killed a lion for the few sheep that he was looking after. It became such a revelation when, when I had one of uh, our original director share, share from work share on it that, you know, David's brother said to David, where have you left that, those few sheep? David was looking after a few sheep and he was faithful in looking after a few sheep. And when you hear that David killed the lion, he killed the bear, he killed those things for the few sheep. He was just being faithful. And when he faced Goliath, he was just being faithful to do what he always did before. When he killed the lion, when he killed the bear, he was just preparing to kill Goliath. So David never really changed what he was doing. He did what he would do. I think he used he used matombo aishansaji futawai. <laughs> so whatever I try to say, I'm saying stay there. Just do the simple things that God has told you to do. Just stay in relationship with Him. Stay in the Word. Stay meditating on the Word of God day and night. No matter the season, there's never a time that will come and we say, "Ah, now I need to do something different." That's all I'm saying. Amen. Amen. Thank you uh, very much for that illustration that of David from the story of David. Um, anyone who's still burning contribution that they want to share with us? Um, I think while we wait, um, I think 
just the biggest sorry, lesson sorry, from because, yes sorry because just to add on to David's story <laughs> the Lord is just keeps on adding to me just, he was just showing me right now that you know as David was facing Goliath this this is a new task mm -hmm. a huge huge uh, <laughs> uh, huge task to kill Goliath as we all know you uh, uh, Goliath was huge uh, the king tried to give him his uh, his armor and it the Bible says the king tried to give uh, David his armor, his, uh, his shield and all, all his armor to protect him. But David took it off and said, and went as he was, like he used to when he fought the lion and the bear. That bear, David, he went as he was, trusting God. He never changed anything. So I know in different seasons in our lives, there's a temptation to, to want to change things, to want to move from your place that has brought you to that place, the place of fruitfulness, the place of power, the place of authority, which is relationship with God and try and weigh something else. But just like David, he said, no, I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay David and I'll fight with no, no one's armor. He just used what, what he used to use before. So for me, God is saying, stay there. That is the place of power, amen. Amen. And um, I like Fina, Fina just saying, so fight. Oh, sorry, you can go ahead. Nico. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Fina saying so good about not changing the armor. The word of God sustains us. Amen. And so I'm thinking um, just to see what this looks like practically, because um. I mean, saying you should stay in the word of God, we should remain in the word of God, we should not move out of relationship with God, it might seem like it's a bit abstract. I, I mean, I want to, to, to ask, like, what does that look like from like a day to day? Um, like when we're living our lives, because we don't always just, we are not cooped up in our rooms and we can't always just have the word of God in front of us. Amen. Um, we are busy doing different things during the day what does that look like to stay in the word because i know like what we experience our daily experiences what we're going through at work they are all things that are competing with the word of god in our mm -hmm. lives and they are all things that have the potential to take root in our hearts mm -hmm. and displace that word of god because we know from the from the parable of the sower when jesus was explaining it to his disciples and he said that um that those that are on the thorny ground are like those that let the cares of the world come in and choke the word mm. of God. So the cares mm. of the world actually are, have the potential to choke the word of God. So what does it look like to stay in the word of God when we are moving on, when we're living our daily lives? Like, what does that look like? Amen. So that That's we don't it. let the cares of the world choke the word of God. Amen. That's a powerful question, Nicole, because someone might think we are saying, just stay reading the word. Don't do anything. Don't get out of the house. Just be reading the word. So that's a good, good question. For me, I think, I think others will also help me here. But I think it's, it's staying in fellowship with God, making your relationship with God a priority. That means being purposeful about setting time, for the way, for example, talking about business of life, that means setting time aside for you to just spend time in the word of God, to read the word of God. Um, for me, I, pres I, I prefer early hours of the morning to just spend time with God reading his word. And what I also like, uh, the scriptures we're talking about, meditating on the word of God, the Lord knew that we cannot just stay reading the word, but even as we read the word, Take some, some scriptures, take some words to think on, to ponder on as you go about your day. Uh, the thing is, you know, if you're not thinking on the word, you're thinking of something, even in your business, even as you are working. You, I can be so hectic at work, so busy, but worrying and being anxious about something at the same time. So the word, the Lord has given us the word to meditate on, to think on, to ponder on as we go about our day-to-day -day business think on the word of god uh, think on he, his promises to you meditate on that you can 
you can have that in your heart. You don't necessarily have to be reading. You don't necessarily have to close yourself up in your room. Just stay in fellowship with God through his word as you meditate on his word, as you are busy doing. So for me, it's, it's a staying in fellowship with God. Just it, for me, it has also been prioritizing. Uh, I, I found myself being so busy, so hectic with good things, with, 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 with work, children, all that. But I've learned to be purposeful about my relationship with God, making it priority. That's why I said, for me, I've, uh, I've tried to find hours that I can spend in the word, spend with the Lord in prayer, talking to him in fellowship and praise and worship. And then during the day, I, I focused on just meditating on his word, on his promises. And what I like about Jesus, you take him wherever you go. He's not just in your room. When I go to work, I can be speaking on, uh, to him, just being conscious of his presence, just being conscious that he's there with me. Because the truth is, you can be doing that or you can be doing the opposite. If you are not meditating uh, on the word of God and in fellowship with God, you are fellowshipping with uh, fear, anxiety, pressure, other things are happening, even in your business. That's what I think. I don't know. Maybe others can share, share on that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to, to, to ask that because I know sometimes we don't think about um, whatever else we focus on as being things that we're actually meditating on. Amen. But um even if you're at work and you're thinking about work you're actually meditating on work if mm. there's something that's happened and you're worried about it you're actually meditating on that instead yeah. of meditating on the word of god and so sometimes we might think that meditation on the word of god is something that is so big that what we are always doing all the time mm. but the truth is that um when we are constant when our minds are focused on something we're meditating on that. And Amen. what God is asking us to do is just instead of focusing on those other things that we would naturally focus on, to replace that with the word of God. And Amen. yeah, so thank you very much. Um, Kelly, yes, you want to say something? You can go ahead. Oh, yes. Um, I just wanted to, 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 to say that your question was so good, Nicole, um, mm. because... Because we, we, we also need to figure out how that practically looks like, mm. especially in the busyness of life and, you know, work, school, it, like you just have to sometimes find what works for you. And just to add on to what my Zulu said, pretty, sometimes it's about finding pockets. You can find that your day is so filled out, but you can find pockets of, of, of just going just sitting just maybe just um stepping out from the crowd and just finding time to just meditate on god's word and just figure out what he's saying even during the day because he's always speaking to us so a lot of the times you might not find time to practically sit down and get into worship and but you know you can find during the day time of of just the holy spirit ministering to you and you just engaging in that even um, when you are in the busyness of life. So I, I just wanted to add on to what my Zulu was saying to just say that, yeah, it's about finding how, what, what really works for you and um, yeah, going from there with your journey with God. Amen. Thank you very much, um, Kelly. Um, and I, I, so I don't maybe I can also add, hand. Nicole. Maybe I can yes. also add, you know, for me, it was such a revelation, like Kelly saying that it, it became such a revelation that I can be with God 24 seven, just that he's, he's a person and, and he's a different person because he's always with me. He lives inside of me. So 24 seven, I have him available to me. And just like I would talk to my husband when he's, when, when he's next to me, and we don't spend 24 hours without talking to each other. He's right there with us, even as you're working. Sometimes it's just speaking to him, you know, not only asking. Yes, you can ask him. Sometimes I ask him for wisdom when I'm at work. Sometimes I share with him things that, that are, you know, good things that are happening to me or bad things that are happening to me. Just a revelation that he's a real person and he, he, 
He just wants to do life with us. He wants to hang around us. He wants to do our day to day with, you know, he is our closest friend and is always there with us. So it might not even necessarily have to be something that, that you, you have to close your eyes and pray, just doing life with him. Uh, being conscious of him, that being aware of him, being uh, being with you, for me, uh, it's it's just another way of of of, of spending time with the, with the Lord. And I was going to say, um, I, I was going to say, um, for me, another the one thing that changed that changed my life, and not everyone can do that, but for me, the Lord led me in terms of making relationship with him priority, I think he, he needed my attention. For me, I had to make a choice to go to Bible school. And I thank God I went to Bible school. That's when I really discovered all this that I'm sharing, that God wants to have relationship with me. That, you know, even as I prioritize my time with him, it's not a time me and you know this, I would say, I need to do this. It's not a, it's a, it's not and uh, it's, it's something beautiful. It's something I look forward to because it's out of relationship. So for some people, really, it's really setting apart time from your busy schedules to really sit down under his word, to really, yeah, to grow in his word and giving more time to his word. I'm not saying everyone, but for me, I'm just sharing some of the things that has helped me spending, uh, growing in relationship with God and getting to know him, being purposeful about setting time, just like we are purposeful when we want to grow in certain areas, being purposeful about setting time to grow in the things of God. Sometimes you just have to make that decision that, you know what, I'm going to give this this one year, two years, three years, sitting under God's word and growing in relationship with him. So yeah, I wanted to share that. There's a question from Mr. Mago. Um, there's a question from Mr. Mago. He's asking, what is to keep God's word in my heart? Is it to memorize scriptures? So how can I know that God's word in my heart? Um, Amen. Um, I think to keep God's word in our hearts is to meditate and uh, not to memorize, to meditate on God's word, to ponder. It's just basically pondering on God's word, thinking upon his word. I think it's different from memorizing. You know, like we when we grow up, I remember we would memorize for God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in it. It was just repeating words and it. I didn't take time to think about what I was saying. I would say it, but I didn't take time to think about, to, to stop and say, for oh, God so loved. God so loved, you know. Now you're thinking about it. You're meditating on it. You're pondering on it. You're massaging that, that word. Mm. You, you might not even take the whole scripture for oh, God so loved. He so loved the world, not just Christians, the world. So yeah, spending more time thinking on it. That, that, that's what I think uh, is keeping God's word in your heart as you think on it, as you meditate on it, as you ponder on it. And you might be repeating it like you are memorizing, but it's not really memorizing. You might be repeating it through your head, but it's in your heart, you're thinking on it. Uh, I think it's the same. I'll, I'll go back to saying it's the same as worrying or being anxious because if you're worried or anxious in your heart, you're thinking about something over and over again. Maybe someone offended you, you're thinking, sure, sure. You know, how could they do this to me? After all that, you are thinking of it over and over in your heart. Meditating is uh, keeping the word of God in your heart, I think, is really thinking on God's word like that over and over, pondering on it, staying on it, just getting more, squeezing more out of that, that word of God. That's what I think others can share. Um. Okay, so they've responded that that's helpful. I just wanted to add on that um, that the reason that we meditate on the Word of God is that um, is that it transforms us, so that it changes us. 
And um, memorizing is just knowing something. You might, I mean, I went to, <laughs> going to school, you, you, I mean, you cram for exams, but as soon as you are out of the exam, you've forgotten what you, what you knew like two hours ago. <laughs> exactly. So the, the point of, of meditation is not so much memorizing and knowing something. It's knowing something so that it has some sort of effect in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, um, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you are careful to observe to do what is in it. Mm-hmm. So there's an element of us using the word of God to change our life. Like, mm-hmm. not so much that mm-hmm. we can, not mm-hmm. us working to change ourselves. Mm. but realizing that this word was given for us transformed and Mm -hmm. when you when you meditate on the word of god um it's supposed to paint a picture of who he sees you as um if for example you take um the the like that scripture is supposed to once you've meditated on it, paint a picture of you being healthy, you mm-hmm. being free from whatever sickness you might have attacking you. So when you meditate, you're supposed to form a picture mm-hmm. of, it's supposed to form a picture of what God sees you as. And as that picture is formed in your, in your, in your mind, mm-hmm. it, it gets easier for you to be able to receive what God is what God is teaching you in his word because you already see yourself in light of the word of God. Nice. So I just wanted to to add that to what you said, um, Auntie Nancy. Nice. Um there's from Fadzaim Shangwe, you can go first. Uh, thank you so much, uh, my Zudu for the wonderful teaching. Um, I have a question to do with, um, you know, when you find yourself in, um, if I can say a season, where you're focusing on the word of God, Mm -hmm. but you're not feeling as excited as you are usually, like, let's say, normally, you feel so excited to be in the word of God. And when you read the word of God, it becomes alive in you. You feel like there's so many revelations coming up and you're just so excited the whole day. You just pass it and you're, you are very happy. Mm-hmm. And then there are times that you read and <laughs> it's, it just feels plain, right? Mm-hmm. But not to say the word of God has lost power. But mm-hmm. I just want to understand that. Is it that you've allowed other things to creep in and just choke the word of God? Or it's actually, it's actually normal? other Christians are going through those seasons as well, where you find yourself focusing on the word of God, but you're not feeling as happy or as as excited about the word of God. And then as you keep going, you start feeling those, uh, the the, the feeling of excitement and being happy again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that powerful question, Patsy. Uh, I, I can help you answer that one because I'm also waiting to hear. <laughs> so <why not? laughs> oh my God, my Zoom. Um, okay, Patsy, I heard your question and I'll, I'll try and answer what I think. Uh, but I wanted to add on to the issue of meditation before I try and answer what Patsy asked. To say meditation, yes, is really about transformation and and making the word of God a reality to us, not what we are saying. But the first thing that it does is it changes how we see ourselves and how we think so that it changes how we speak. Mm, amen. Which is where <laughs> the biggest problem is, is to know, because the fastest way to know what you're thinking or, or thinking or on what you're meditating on is your speech, your words, what you're saying. Mm. It's the fastest way to know what's in your mind or in your heart. Mm. So the biggest thing is that we know that the word from the beginning, everything was created from speech and Speech is also a way that we actually negate the prayer or whatever we're believing for. So the, not only does it change how we see and think, but out of that think, out of that transformation of the, what we think, there is changing of what we say. So that when things, when we are actually faced with challenges, when we're actually going through good things, what is the first thing that we say? It will then show us what we've been sitting with. Have we been sitting with the word of God? Do we believe that God is our source? Do you believe that we've been healed by his stripes? Mm-hmm. That we will know. 
when we are squeezed, what we say will actually sh show us what we've been sitting with in our head, what we've been meditating on. So one of the reasons why we are transformed is to change our speech because words have power, especially when they're spoken. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I've also just realized that meditation is just not thinking with it. It's also mm -hmm. then being so confident to, to speak it because speaking it shows that I really believe this. And of course, not from a muttering place of just blabbering, mm -hmm. but it's so easy to know what someone has been thinking from what they're saying, definitely, especially when they're squeezed. Yeah. Amen. Then with Fadzi, what Fadzi said about the excitement of the word, um, I think I've gone through seasons like that. I go through seasons mm. like that. But what I've learned is to not minimize mm. sowing the seed because um, I don't think it's about a feeling of excitement all the time. I, I think sometimes there are times when we're just sowing the seed, we're taking it down. Mm. And I know that the Holy Spirit has a way of make mm -hmm. reminding us of that word for some time that is coming mm -hmm. because we are supposed to constantly be putting the word in us through reading it through studying it and sometimes we should not be uh be so worried about how it's feeling um mm -hmm. and make it about ah, oh, i'm excited which means the word is really coming in me but not to minimize mm -hmm. that if i'm just taking time to be in the word and ask, asking the holy spirit to do what he can only do to review to show I think that what our part is to put it down, God knows mm. how to, he knows how to then make that word come alive or make it manifest in our life in a way at the right time and whatever. So I don't know if it's really about the excitement, but to say, yeah, we all go through that, but just trusting the process of the word of God that in it, it has power to do what it's supposed to do. Our part is to put it down, to meditate on it. Then God knows the rest of the process. So, yeah, that's me. I, I'm not really focused on the excitement, but I'm just so consistent with putting that word down and asking the Holy Spirit to, to just uh, show me and knowing that at the right time, you'll bring it to my remembrance and it will come as an armor for me whenever I need it. So that's my answer. Hey, yeah, man. I don't know if that helps. Thank you, Faina. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I was also going to share that uh, I, I go through seasons like that, whereby there are seasons when you're reading and the explosions, <laughs> revelations, and <laughs> the seasons where you are just reading and you're, you're thinking, I'm just reading. Uh, I'm not feeling anything. But just like Fina said, for me, there are times when I've been reading like that and I'm not seeing anything. But later on, in days, months later, the Lord brings that word alive. The word that I've been taking in and feeling that there's nothing happening. He just brings that word. Maybe a situation happens. He brings that word alive and speaks to me. Or maybe I'm sharing someone. He just uses those things and start to paint pictures later on. So like I think Fina rightfully said, uh, it, it, it's, it's not about how we feel, but as long as we are faithful to sow the seed. And I was just seeing a picture of a sower. When a sower so maybe sometimes the, the weather is not so good. <laughs> maybe it's cold. Maybe they are sowing when the weather is cold that day or it's, cold, it's rainy there. But they're, they're faithful to put it, that seed in the ground. And in the fullness of time, the, the seed will produce fruit. So I think it's being faithful to, like Fina has already said, it's just being faithful to take in the word, to spend time uh, in, in the word, in seasons where we feel like we, have, we are having revelations and seasons where we feel like there's nothing coming, surely the word does not return void. It will come and accomplish its purpose in your life. So yeah, thank you, Faina. Amen, thank you. Thank you. I don't see any more hands that are up. Um... So, I don't know. Auntie Nancy, do you want to wrap up so that we close the service? Amen, amen. I, I think my summary is just, just simple saints. Let's just dwell, dwell in the word of God in relationship with him. Let's just stay there. I know sometimes we want complicated things. It's too simplified. But that is the place of power. That is the place of fruitfulness. That is the place of prosperity, success, you name it. That is the place to be, to be with him. And all the other things will come from there. So let's just prioritize. Prioritize no matter, you know, 
that is a place where a successful business person comes from. That is a place where a successful mother comes from. That is a place where a successful minister comes. So I'm saying in whatever season you are in your life, whatever situation you are in your life, that is the place of prosperity, of staying rooted just like a tree, of being faithful to stay in the word of God. And what I like about relationship with the word of God and God is it's not something people see. It's just you being faithful when no one is seeing you, but your profiting will be evident mm -hmm. to all, just like a tree stays there, stays there. I think some people will think it will it ever be a fruit, but one day when the fruit come, you all see it. So I'm just encouraging everyone in whatever season you find yourself in, whatever situation, as long as you are a child of God, stay in the soil that's where you thrive that's where you you prosper that's where you find life stay in the word of god in relationship with him amen amen thank you very much um that was a very powerful reminder um for us to just stay in his words for us to know that even i mean it's not about feelings it's not always about whether you feel like there's any transformation happening, but there is always something happening as long as you are faithful to stick to the pro stick to his method of doing things and to not uproot yourself based on what you feel or what it looks like. Yeah, so thank you very much for that. Um, since we've come to the end of our service today, it was a short one, but it was a powerful one. And I believe that God has, has taught each and every single one of us to just remain in his word and that it's important for us to remain in his word. Um, if the tech team could please put up the, um, nah, uh, yes. So um, this is not the end. Um, we don't just meet on Sundays. Um, throughout the week, we have different meetings. Uh, we have prayer meetings every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. From six to seven. We have men's fellowship that runs every Saturday from nine to 10.30, that's on Skype. And then every Sunday morning from 8.15 to 9.15 is when we have our children's church. So feel free to join um any of those um ministries that apply to you and if anyone needs any assistance they can contact our church administrator Fina on the number that is displayed on your screen um if i can please call back uh mr shenji if he's around are you around mr shenji so that you can close for us in prayer I don't think he's around. So I will ask. Um, I'll pray, Nicole. I'll no, pray. it's fine. Thank All you. Right. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. We just want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you, Father, for speaking to me, speaking through me, human beings. We thank you for every word that has been shared in, on this platform. And we thank you for reminding us, Father, that you've made life simple for us. You've worked all the work that needs to be worked and you've finished the work of the cross. Ours is to now dwell in relationship with you, to stay in your word. We just want to thank you, Father, that you have simplified things for us. You've brought rest to us, Father. So we just want to thank you today and thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us throughout the week as we go about our everyday business just to make priority the word of God, to make priority relationship with you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that it does not return void. It's accomplishing its purpose in our lives. Thank you, Father, that we are going to testify of your goodness because your word has come to us and it is working its purpose in our lives. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your love. Thank you for every person and family represented here. 
Thank you, Father, that you are going to be with us throughout this week. As you have said in your word that you are with us, you never leave us, nor forsake us. Thank you that throughout this week, we are going to see your goodness. We are just going to, to be awake to your presence. We are just going to see goodness and mercy following us all the days throughout the week we thank you father we glorify your name in the name of jesus amen and amen amen